Are your channels missing something? Do you scroll endlessly looking for the data? Well, it doesn't happen to me because I use Salesforce channels. Watch this. Hello and welcome to Slack School. My name is Mike Reynolds. I'm part of the Slack team here at Salesforce and I'm excited to talk to you today about Salesforce channels. Salesforce channels is the feature that lets us put Slack directly inside Salesforce. It also lets us take that Salesforce data and put it in its own dedicated tab safely inside of Slack. We're gonna look at how to set that up and then see it in action. Let's get after it. Names can be confusing. So let's start there. We're gonna talk about a feature called Salesforce channels. Salesforce channels are Slack channels that are related to a single Salesforce record. Hopefully you just watched the episode on Slack channels, so you already know that Slack channels are an amazing way to centralize collaboration and communication. The big picture idea here is that we want to enable you to bring all of your tools into one place and use all of those tools from that one location. Salesforce channels is going to enable us to do just that, but for more, than just your Salesforce licensed users. We'll talk about that in a bit. Let's talk about who can actually use Salesforce channels. Salesforce channels is available to all Slack users. That means if you're using free Slack or you're using Enterprise Plus, that's fine. On the Salesforce side, you do need a Salesforce license. That means currently Salesforce channels is not available to experienced cloud licensed users. It's also as of today, not available on GovCloud. Sorry, we're working on it. Let's get Salesforce channel set up. From Salesforce, I'm going to go to Slack channels for records. And once I find that, I'm going to have to do a little bit of complicated work. So stick with me for a moment. We'll do this twice. We'll set up accounts and then we'll set up opportunities. I'm gonna start by going to this add objects button. I like this one more than that one because it's at the top. Must be better, right? So up here, I'm going to go for ACC, that'll be account. And then I also need to find opportunity in this list. Then I'm going to click this add to objects button. All right, that was it. That's your Salesforce channel setup. Not really. There's one more step we need to make. I need to add the Slack component to my lightning record pages. I like to do that directly from the lightning, the lightning record page. I'll do that from the lightning record page. It's okay, Bob Ross would want me to move on. So I'm gonna to go to edit page, and then I'm gonna look for the Slack component, which will now be here. It's a standard component. I'll just drag that, drop it on the page. We'll save and activate. And then when I go back to my lightning record page, I now have this new component, which is uh, is my my Slack in Lightning component. Now I've got this great little component that I've added to my Lightning record page. It's the same component everywhere and it works the same way. Starting a Slack channel is as complex as sending the first message. So all I need to do is type something and then send it. When I do that, You'll see that Slack thinks for a second, and then you're all set up. It's going to give me this nice pop-up that tells me I can go to Slack to see everything, or I can add people to the channel. But we will take a look at Slack. Now that I've got this, I have this new section here for Salesforce channels. Since we know we can reorder these sections, I'm going to bring it up to the top, and then we'll take a look at it. I can see the Hello World message that I just sent, and I notice I have a few other tabs. So let's take a look at those. First off, I have the account details. This is the one that everybody's gonna love. And honestly, I love this too, it's super exciting. So I have quick actions at the top, sure, that's great, but look at this, it's the record. And I can edit this. What's their cuisine type? I don't know, let's say it's Indian, I love that. Ooh, employees, how many do they have? How about 33? I can save those changes. This is the live record. This is Salesforce, but I'm inside of Slack. It's fantastic. It's so easy. Oh, look, I have, I have related lists. I wonder if they have any contacts. 
Oh, they do. They do have a contact. Look at that. It's amazing. And I can see it. Oh, can I create a contact? I can create a contact. I can do all of the things. It's like I don't have to swivel chair anymore. Only this is a real feature that's standard and available to everybody. The next tab that I have is related conversations. Related conversations are really nice. What they let me do is if there's other channels or other places where I'm talking about the Salesforce record in question, it's gonna draw all of that together for me automatically and put it right here. Fantastic. So the demo was cool, but is my data safe? Yeah, absolutely. Here's how this works. When you're sitting in Slack, you have to log in to Salesforce. What that means for us is that I allow Salesforce to control 100% of what is shown in Slack to that user. This isn't a general type of connection. It's a user specific connection. And so my user in Slack and my user in Salesforce have to be identified as the exact same user. We like to do that with a federated ID or an email address. Salesforce is always the source of truth for who can see what, whether that is a field or a record. Now, why is that so important? Well, that means that the setup is really what I showed you earlier. We turn it on and then we add the component to the page. The amazing benefit of this is that folks that in the past would not have been able to work directly with other users in Salesforce because they didn't have a Salesforce license are now completely unblocked. Using Slack, those folks working in departments or teams that don't have Salesforce licenses can use Slack to collaborate about Salesforce data without having direct access to it. When I'm in Slack having conversations with people that don't have Salesforce licenses, I am truly able to connect and collaborate with everybody in my organization. It's brilliant. Let's take a moment to talk about data. We broadly, we want to think about data being in one of two types. I have structured data and I have unstructured data. And what does that mean? Well, a really easy way to think about it is to think about the address of the Salesforce Tower here in Chicago. It's 333 Wolf Point. Now in Salesforce, I see that as a single field containing the address, 333 Wolf Point. But in Slack, I see the entirety of everything that I just said. The address is 333 Wolf Point. Both contain the information, but there's a key difference. In Salesforce, I have a very small bit of the total of what I just said, but in Slack, I have all of the text. This is the difference between structured data and unstructured data. Why does this matter to us? Well, structured data works really, really well for getting work done. I'm, I'm doing a lot of cases. I'm, I'm managing my accounts. I'm working these sales opportunities. Unstructured data is really great for humans. We live on unstructured data. It's how we communicate. It's everything that I'm saying right now. It's also how we work with agents. And so as we look at the future, as we start to think about how we work with agents, we need to think about how we interact with unstructured data because we use unstructured data to get work done. And that's what Salesforce channels and Slack lets us do. Well, that's it. That's Salesforce channels. Let me know how it went for you in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join us in the Slack community. Tell me what you want to see in the next episode. Send me a DM, say hi. Don't be shy. Oh, hey. You did a great job today. Salesforce, oh, that's terrible. Pretty confusing. <laughs> Start there. What did I just say? Can be, if I were drunk, there would be an excuse for this, but it's just that I can't talk.